Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create excavations and cuts within a 3D terrain model in Rhino. In this video I'm going to be going through three examples, first cutting out simple geometry from the surface of a terrain, then we'll be cutting out a path from our terrain model, and finally we'll be looking at how to cut out more natural objects like rivers or ponds from our terrain. Now to begin with, in order to cut out any objects or remove or excavate any objects from our terrain, we first need to make sure that our terrain model is a 3D solid poly surface. To do that, we can select our surface we've created and just type in extrude, select the extrude surface option and just extrude our surface downwards like so to turn it into 3D geometry. Once I've done that, I usually delete the surface plane from the top because we no longer require that. What you then might want to do is just tidy up the base of this by removing this kind of base piece on the bottom. To do that, I'll usually make a large cube like so, fit down there. And once that's created and in position, we'll just use the Boolean difference tool, selecting our terrain, hitting the enter key, and then selecting our cube we've created to then remove that piece from the bottom, tidying up our model. Now with these terrain models, I usually like to make them quite deep to allow any excavations we might want to do within that surface of the model. So we have room to kind of dig down into the surface of this geometry. Now to begin with, we're just gonna perform some simple excavations on this model using this Boolean difference tool again. We can start just by simply creating a sphere here I'm going to make this relatively large. We're just going to move this into position in the terrain and we're going to use it to cut out a kind of spherical groove in this surface, almost like a sort of pond or crater that might be in the surface of this particular terrain. So once that's in position and you're happy with that location, we can then use the Boolean difference tool again, selecting our terrain first, the object which we're removing the piece from, hitting enter and then selecting the object which we will be removing from that terrain, i.e. the sphere. And once you hit enter, it will delete the sphere and just leave that excavation. And there you can see we now have our spherical excavation in that terrain. We can use this same process when creating a simple trench within our terrain as well. And I'm gonna just use the box tool here to just draw out a kind of simple rectangular box I like to make my kind of objects which I'm removing from my terrain a lot larger than the terrain itself, which allows me to kind of move it into position within that object. So we can move this up. Perhaps we've got this just sort of intersecting with this first excavation we've made. And when we're happy with its location, again, we can use that Boolean difference tool to select the terrain, select the object and subtract it, creating that particular excavation in there. So you can see very quickly, we can start to chop out different parts of the terrain, sculpting it and excavating it as per the proposal that we want to put on this particular object. You can also do the reverse of this, where we might want to add objects onto this particular terrain here. And it might be we want to create a little kind of plateau or lookout within this hillside. So I can just sort of insert this box into the area that we'd want to create this flattened part of the hill. And then instead of the Boolean difference tool here, we can use the Boolean union tool, selecting both objects and selecting Boolean union to unify those 3D shapes and create this surface like so. So very quickly, you can subtract and excavate areas and also add on areas using these Boolean tools within this terrain. Now this is easy when you're just doing it with simple geometry, but it might be that you want an actual kind of wiggly path or kind of something that might follow the contours to be excavated out of this terrain surface. In order to do that we first need to define the look of our particular path in this terrain. So I'm going to go into the top view here and just using this curve tool here we're going to draw out a path that might follow along this terrain and I'm just going to kind of draw a sort of wiggly path here that's going to be kind of moving along the surface of this terrain. Going back to 3D, you may find that your path is kind of completely flat to the ground, but it may be at some points it lifts up slightly. If your path isn't completely flat like mine is, you can always use the set point command, S-E-T-P-T, -T, like so, set it to the Z-axis 
make sure it's aligned to wild, hit OK, and it will just flatten that line out like so. Once we've got that, we then want to move it upwards above our terrain, and we're then going to project that curve down onto the geometry below to essentially sort of map that line onto the surface of our terrain. To do that, we're going to use the project tool, which can be found in the toolbar here, or we can select the curve and type in project to project it. Once we've clicked that project, we can then select our terrain that we want to project the curve onto, hit the enter key, and you'll see there it's projected that line onto the surface of the geometry. Now, because it's a 3D shape, it's also projected it below the geometry as well, and you can see it kind of wrapping around the surface here. So usually what I do is just select those two lines we've got there, hit the explode button to break them up, and I'm just going to lock my terrain for now, and then just delete those ones below the surface of the geometry. So we're just left with these ones on top there. Um, it might be like mine that you've got some elements that actually kind of clip off the edge like so um, and I'm actually going to rebuild these so they kind of have that little loop going slightly off my terrain here. Um, to do that we're just going to quickly create a vertical surface like so just moving up on this terrain and we're just going to use that move it into position and then use it to trim off the excess line here so we're just left with that little loop that's on the edge. Once we've got that, I can then move that vertically downwards to snap on to my other line I've made. Just to zoom in on this piece. And then we just want to make sure that it's properly joining. So I usually just select the points like so, use that move tool and just snap them to the end of my line. It might be that you have a couple of points here to play with. So we can just move these into position like so here and you might need to do a little bit of moving with the line just to create that kind of gradient that's going but I think that's about working we've got this tiny kink here but I'm just going to straighten out slightly until you've got it kind of looking as you want it to and I think that should be fine for the type of curve that I want to create there once you've got those, we're going to select that geometry and hit the Join tool to join it all together. And then if we want to excavate this path out of the terrain, we're going to need to give it some physical kind of thickness to be able to then remove it from the surface of this geometry. To do that, we're going to be using the Sweep tool, but first we need to create a cross-section for this path, which we're then going to excavate out. And I'm just going to create a simple sort of rectangle for this, like so. Once we've made that, we're going to move it to the starting point of the line here, rotate it so it's in the right positioning. So we want it sort of vertically upwards and we also need it to be perpendicular to our line here. So it's going to follow the cross section of the line. And to do that, I usually use the rotate 2D to rotate it first to be sort of parallel to the line, then hold the shift key, hold the Z axis rotation here and just hold the shift key to rotate it 90 degrees. There you can see that's perpendicular to the line. And what we'll also do is we're gonna just move this slightly up and out of the surface like so. So it's kind of just popping out there. And once we've got that, we're gonna then use the sweep one command to sweep that cross section across this path we've made. So we select sweep one, select our rail, which is our path here, and then select our sweep shape which is our cross section hit the enter key hit enter again and it will then follow that cross section along our path like so now you might want to sort of reform this to road like which will flatten out the sweep because you can see here it might have a sort of strange angle on it and if we want it to sort of flatten you can click that road like option in order to do that um, and I think that's looking good there so once you're happy we can hit OK now you'll find that it might not completely kind of remove the terrain here at the end. We might need to extend it. So what we want to do is before we remove it from the terrain, we first need to make it a closed object. So to do that, we can just type in cap in our command and that will just cap off the ends like so. 
so it becomes a closed poly surface and you need to make sure this is closed for us to use those boolean tools to extract it from the surface here. Once it's closed we can also extend it just by selecting or sort of deselecting the thing and then typing in extrude surface selecting that kind of back face here which we'll just zoom in and select it and just extruding it outwards like so and we'll do the same for this side repeat the command and extrude that face so our path looks something like this then we're just going to take all of those elements and unify them together using the boolean union tool once you've got that we're ready to then extract that path from our terrain to do this we first need to unlock our terrain up here then select the boolean difference tool select our terrain object hit enter select our path object hit enter again and then we can subtract it from that surface we can then delete the path if we need to or we can just move it down and out the way but there you can see we've now cut out our path from the surface of that terrain that's kind of excavating that root out of that particular terrain object now for the final example we're going to actually cut out a more sort of organic looking pond from the surface of this terrain to do this first we're just going to draw out this pond in the top view and I'm just going to use the curve tools to do this just drawing out a sort of rough shape for this pond like so now if we were simply just to take that pond shape and extrude it down just using the extrude tools as we've done previously and subtract it from the surface of this model we would get that kind of area excavated as you can see here if we just follow this but it looks very rigid it looks more like a swimming pool rather than a pond and it hasn't got those nice kind of shallow curved edges that you'd expect from a more natural looking object so instead of doing that we're going to do something slightly different where we're going to take this sort of shape the area of the pond here and we're first going to offset that line inwards so we're going to offset it and depending on the size of your pond you might want to change this distance we just want it a sort of nice amount away from the edge so I'm going to change it to about six here and just offset it inwards like so so we have these two blue parallel lines here then we're going to move the inner line downwards and that's going to be the depth of our pond like so once we've done that we're going to select both lines and hit the patch tool again essentially doing the inverse of when we'd make our terrain model we're going to do the opposite where we're making a kind of dish here so we use patch depending on how detailed you want this to be you can set your surface u and v spans and that will determine the kind of detail and accuracy of this surface and once you've made it you'll see it will make this kind of dish shape which is going to become a pond now in order to then excavate that from our terrain we obviously need to then extrude it upwards like so we can delete that initial surface and then we're just going to move this into position wherever we want that extrusion to be and I usually try to make sure that we don't have any of the kind of sharp edges in there like so so depending on your terrain you might have to just move that about and once you're happy we can then use that boolean difference function one more time to excavate that out and there we have our kind of natural looking pond cut out from the surface of our terrain there so that was just three different ways you can use the boolean tools to quickly extract and excavate areas from a terrain model i hope you found this tutorial useful and if you want any other videos on creating landscapes or rendering these in rhino please check out the videos on the channel